These titles were created by Steven Spielberg at a cost of millions. Anyway, the money we save not having fancy titles, we go and buy pot so we can smoke pot and get drunk. Who knows? Let's get real. Let's go on to the footage we have. This is a continuation of tape one of footage that we have showing planes being repaired. Hope you can benefit from this and learn some new tips and techniques. Would you buy a used car from this man? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to start off volume two of this crash repair video. This is one of the planes that's had extensive modifications. Rudder replacements, ray rudder added, fuse gear added, wing gear turned into fuse gear, total refinished job. Many, many modifications have been made to this plane over the years. This plane is six years old. A lot of them are on video. We're going to try to pick through the footage and find appropriate ones for this tape. But we're going to start off, and I guess this is really what it's all about. At this year's Nationals, and the nine disc tape is being made in 1994, Mike Pratt launched his plane, and we had a tremendous team effort. Now, just prior to that, there had been all kind of nonsense controversy, people writing letters back and forth, everybody insisting they love me and that I love them. It turned into where uh, kind of a, you know, a dog and pony show at the Nats, and as soon as Mike crashed his plane, everything was forgotten. Everybody uh, teamed up and put in a tremendous effort at fixing his plane. I have it on video. If you haven't seen the Nats video, I'm going to run part of that right through here right now. Keep in mind, this is a team effort at doing one of these repairs. Now, Paul Walker is an aircraft engineer. He did his part very well. I did some of this stuff. Jim Damarell was, was a key man doing the crutch and the motor mounts and things like that. Uh, Mike Pratt basically sat around on his fat ass and did nothing. Uh, tell jokes, order pizza and beer. Sorry, Mike. Truth of the matter, everybody pitched in. Bobby Hunt, Billy Werwidge, uh, I, might, I may be leaving somebody out here, but pretty much everybody chipped in. That's what's important to me about this hobby. One of the reasons I don't find a big problem devoting my life to this hobby. But keep in mind, if you can take advantage of a team effort and you're having trouble repairing a plane on your own, it's always good. Take advantage of the knowledgeable, uh, friendly people in the hobby. And uh, needless to say, Midgley is one of them. Don't, don't feel not at ease to go right up to his house and have him repair your plane. We've done a lot of them on the field that I don't have on video, but... I'm going to try to pick through and find appropriate things that will help you touch up, prepare planes, add ray rudders, uh, retrofit engines, replace bottom blocks, refinish damaged parts of the plane. This plane in particular has had many little parts refinished, damaged. I can't even go into it. It's so long. Anyway, I'll pick through the footage, and this is volume two of an ongoing series. As we accumulate footage or it becomes available, we'll try to even go into volume three and four, etc., etc. But it's an ongoing series, and if you have any suggestions how I can make these tapes better, or you want to add some footage of your own or some still pictures, we'd really appreciate them. had a one of the uh, flexible lead outs broke and he's going to need some help fixing it so we're going to try to get a hold of him as soon as we get back to the room and uh, do the little the thing we do best get him flying again Fubaz back there okay it's about two in the afternoon after the first day of qualifying Jim Lee's putting his stuff away unfortunately we did have one go in today Mike Pratt had some problems with the lead-out cable. This is what the Nats are about. Yeah. End up with all the great steam Randy Smith put the motor back together. 
When do you ask you're asking you're orchestrating? Billy Werewich helping get the wing of line right. So that's how we keep Bill Rich in line, huh? Pick a side. <laughs> Is the mound still intact in the airplane? Just the wing over there. But ah! Well, the whole thing's out. Oh, alright. Yeah, there's one of the little three girls here. Right? <laughs> That's a guy with three daughters that have a hair dryer. Yeah. <laughs> Should be asking here's a bathroom. You use the hair dryer. Yeah. Does he have any hair left? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've worked. Trying to figure out if the autoclave is going to melt the foam or not. 
so you need a piece of. Can you throw me that copper wire on the reel over there again? A little bit of thing dry. We got a package kind of thing that we like. We take the uh, collector saw. Those flaps right sure. there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've just found the flaps to Mike's airplane. They've been delivered a little bit later. The wing was just in one piece. We're fitting some fiberglass, getting the bell crank back in. Well, get some CA's fixed all these. Give me some CA's. Where's the CA? Six o'clock, Mike. Well, how are we going on time? Mike's already been told he can't take a practice flight in the morning. He's got to go straight for an official to make the wing over pull out under four feet. We're being careful not to change the needle valve. The needle valve has not been adjusted. It is still in its original place. I got a rubbing compound. Ask him what the epoxy's mixing up. Ask him what it was. 15 or 5. Bob Park. No. No, no. What we put on the pipe. Stuff you put on the five. Minutes, right? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's five. It's five. five. Well, on the pipe? Five. five was five. Five minutes, yeah. It's slow. Yeah, it's slow, it's slow, 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 five, yeah. I got some stuff that says it's four. Slow five. Yeah. It's probably the same thing. Yeah. Basically the same thing. Yeah, you can bring this big thing down. Five kinds of CA, none of them SIG. Midwest plywood. We're doing good. This thing's actually going to fly. <laughs> you can put that on the back of my Easy to repair. <laughs> Come, comes with special easy to repair video tape. You your 40 closest friends are. Yeah, they are going to earn about $7,000 worth of a box. <laughs> Crashed a reason in two hours. Six o'clock, Mike. Kit to be kit to. Right. <laughs> You don't want to take any of that extra. It's got a nice and fit way. You only know, actually got to cut one side. You get it. Time for a final alignment of the wing. Uh, center in. Uh, center in. Which end of the center? Your center. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are oh, too much. Too much. Mike's outside. He can't watch this. <laughs> Wendy's busy putting retracts on the wing. It'll be the new added feature. Well, just to keep it. Just leave the tape on it. Yeah. It's been done. Yeah, yeah. You're easier if you're not touching because you're always doing this. Got it. Somebody stand back six feet and you there can you see go. it from yeah, turning around. Right, right. We'll get it. Okay, right here. Let's try this. Do one more thing. Let me go stand outside with it. In the sun, it'd be yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, put it in yeah. the sun. Let it cook. I think that's pretty close. No, Drew. No, Okay, first operation's over. Now let's move on to this one. Let's bring in the next surgical team. <laughs> How much did you offer for it? He just asked me if I wanted to sell it. I really don't. I just thought it was a piece of fish. I don't. 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 I the one that burned up in yeah. the is the one you rebuilt about five years ago for Randy. Yeah, I don't know we did two of them. Yeah. The ring is, yeah, that, that is five, ten years old. The ring's gone, right? You just, well, well, I don't know. The rods are always too loud. The whole thing's just worn out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a woman in the building. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Partridge's. <laughs> I think you rewrote the rule book, Mikey. Hi. Yeah. 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 Here. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> now, if we, all had, if we only had some cow horns to put on it, would it be perfect? <laughs> That's why I close the Super Day once again. That blew the hat to his head. <laughs> you gotta wear it at the bed, don't you? All right. I gotta give him another picture. Do you watch cartoons? Why does that not look? Why does that not look terribly out of character? Mike, 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 do you ever watch cartoons in the afternoon? Never had a chance to. No. No. What's it like, David? Oh, it's <laughs> Okay, mix Wait, them up. No, hang on. I'm in the trunk. <laughs> I got, uh, I got thin stuff. I got Kevlar. Honestly, you guys want beer? You bet. <laughs> All right. Anything. All right, go get us a beer. Get yeah, right. We just yeah, want to we're, walk around the room here. We're not flying tonight anyway. So like, See, this is going to be evidence like used against Mike in a lawsuit. <laughs> there must be 50 tubes of epoxy. <laughs> Holy Christ. <laughs> <laughs> They made him wear the, ah. <laughs> the pilot glued to his head for the rest of the day. The rest of Super day. day. No, for the rest of his week. Yeah. For, for the rest of his trip. life. And then they glued the hat to his head. Yeah, just good to explain the Concora's finishing process. <laughs> right, right. This should be good. You always want to learn how to do Concora stuff? Where's your needle valve oh, hole? This, this is it. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is this the needle valve hole? Yes, it sure is. It's big enough. That's plenty big. <laughs> Mike, you're having your moment in the sun, one way or another. One way or another, yeah. Every guy gets a day in 30 seconds. Look at this. Look at all this. You know how can we the move tubes? I know. Let's get this here. Let's get a one shot. That's <laughs> good. And this is after we cleaned it up. This is after we got the leaf blower in here and <laughs> the shop back. What? No, no, no. This is your ticket to fame, Mike. I thought he was already famous. How to go from 18 points to one in one answer. <laughs> <laughs> this whole plane. <laughs> <laughs> this old Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like Mike Vila. This old plane, yeah. <laughs> Just like this old house. You know? It's more like old Norm. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be some kind of a record for ruining a motel room. <laughs> Smile pretty, Mike. All right. <laughs> Oh, it's just like screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, just great. consider how it looked a couple hours ago. <laughs> it, it actually made me look better. <laughs> no, it's just, just put the glass on. Here. Nah, we'll just put pieces of tape. They're all broken. No, yeah, just make three inch wide pieces of tape. Any type of packaging. Yeah, that would be great tape over the uh, ear exit holes. I don't yeah. know. Just on the side. Yeah, we'll just do yeah, it. Just right over the pipe and everything, Mike. Yeah, tape it right up. Just put the engine in and epoxy it. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah. Put the engine in the tank in. This is the best movie I ever saw in my life. Mike, that movie is almost as good as watching you fix this plane. I, I didn't have much to do with it. You guys threw me out. <laughs> Forrest Pratt. <laughs> Proven that the handicap yeah. can fly. <laughs> Life is like a crashed magnum. You never know who's going to come to your room and help you fix it. Life is like a shit sandwich. The more bread you have, the less shit you have to eat, right? <laughs> and what else did I need? Every Two triangles and what? Oh, just a, 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 a couple of triangles and a couple of yeah. 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 inches. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This is the next cover of Stunt News. The plane's outside drying in the autoclave. Just look at, the, there's more epoxy on these bed sheets and bed spreads and grease and oil and bell crank lube and look at this. Mike, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. This was a perfectly good motel room. Before, <laughs> before we got here. The scene of the crime. Wow. Lubbock will never recover from this. I don't believe it. Lubbock was re trying to recover from something before we got here. I'm not sure what it was. Yeah. What we need is a uh, trash. A 50. Mike Pratt, alias Super Dave Osborne, flying the Resurrection Special here. This is the plane you saw earlier on the video at about 97,000 pieces. And I think everybody at the Nats had a hand in putting back together, whether it be metal work, engine work, fixing the pipe, making a new prop, gluing the wings back together, gluing the fuselage back together, putting the firewalls back in. It's a soft mount airplane. Firewall and aluminum mounts up front were completely ripped out of the nose. And they told the man he couldn't practice it until he took his official flight and hit the first wing over. And by God, it looks like it's working. E doggy. All right, there's a couple of things that uh, I'd like to go over on this. One of the things is a new spray gun that we have in stock now. We're going to start using it with the season that's upcoming. And also some of the, uh, it'll be the next thing on this video, some of the sandpaper that Jimmy discovered at a custom car show and he brought over here and we have used it several times with very, very good results. Those are two things that will help you in any repair job. A good spray gun and good quality supply of wet and dry sandpaper. Also another tip, and this was passed on to me by Tom Dixon, if you can't get M600, windshield washer fluid is a good substitute. It's about a dollar a gallon, and M600 is uh, $21 a gallon. So we'll be trying that too in the future. And uh, what I'd like to go over and over here is, well, we'll go to the footage. A good quality 8-ounce cup spray gun. Now, Jim Damerell was over here over the weekend. We didn't have the uh, camera here. It was out shooting a train show. So I didn't get a chance. I'm really sorry I didn't to uh, get some of the other products he had picked up. He went to a trade show where they were showing all different new products for the body shop industry. I think he's going to be here. He said he's, he has some addresses of uh, a company that's up in Westchester that sells some really unique new sandpaper for wet sanding paint. He brought this gun for me to test out. I'm not going to get a chance to test it out in the next couple of days. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll wait till Jimmy has a plane to paint, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll show this on video. This is uh, a clone of a $450 spray gun. Normally, these sell for $450. He picked this up for 70 bucks at a trade show, and I'm trying to get the dealer's name and address. I'm just looking at this now. See this? Obviously, is a clone of uh, of one of the other brands. I don't see the literature in here. Anyway, I missed having a video out yesterday. I could have gotten Jimmy in his new plane. He has his new fuselage here. We also missed seeing Len Brzozowski. He was here with his uh, the Cardinal. It's pretty much ready to put the wing in a body. So uh, for anybody out there that wants to check up on this, let's see where the company's name is. Maybe get some literature from the company. It looks like a real nice unit. If you're in the mood to buy a spray gun, needless to say, there's no name and address on the uh, <laughs> on the box. Anyway, we're going to get together with Jimmy when he paints his new plane anyway. 
it looks like uh, that won't be too far off in the future. Let's see even if there's any. You know, don't you love this? This uh, thing is made in Taiwan. That's great. Just what we need. Anyway, this is one of the options beside having the Indy spray gun. And we certainly in the future will be getting some of this on a video for you. Product that he picked up at an auto body. Uh, tell me again, an auto body trade supply show? Yeah, trade show for auto body people and uh, paint okay. and all this other good stuff. I ran into this guy demonstrating this paper. Uh, it's called Lapika. The neat thing about it is it's on a mylar backing instead of a paper backing. So you can use it, wash it off, and get 10 or 20 times the normal use out of it. It doesn't clog at all. Got a very uniform sandblast grit instead of an abrasive emery or whatever it is they claim to use on regular paper. Comes uh, with these can little candy sanding blocks. One, ha one harder side, one softer side for going around compound. And the main thing is it's supposed to cut, well I've, I've tried it on some flat lacquer anyway, even the 1500, you could feel it cutting, you could feel the abrasive, you could feel when it clogs, you stop, you wash it out, you start over, yet you don't seem to get any swirl or scratch marks with it on a flat panel. So I guess now we'll try it on a couple of dings that this green airplane has collected and uh, see how it works. Yeah, we, we well just to interrupt Jim, we, we basically took the green plane out of hiding, he's been sitting there about eight months since the last time he's flown, hasn't even been really dusted off. So this would be a good test, and it's very old lacquer. That's done in acrylic lacquer, so it'll be a, the same as dope. We'll find a little spot on there and sand it out and see if it buffs right back up. Now, the name of this stuff is uh, just like Topeka, La Pica from Topeka. Jim Lee will probably like that. And uh, the blocks look especially good. I'm really looking forward to trying one of these blocks. So, again, one of the things about the way uh, I evaluate things or the way I do things, maybe it's different than other people, is I like to try it in the real world. And Jim went out and spent uh, who knows what money on this so we could run a couple of tests. If this stuff looks real good, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be basically using it on Jimmy's new plane. We hope to get some of that on video when he's ready to paint it. We have Jimmy's new high-tech spray gun and this uh, new sandpaper. The sanding blocks look especially good. So, you know, let's give them a try. Now, let's just try a spot on the outboard wing. What I want to see is, yeah, what do you got, 1,500? It is tapered. Give me a spot right here. Well, give me the seconds. six, eight, and 15. Yeah, give me the seconds. Well, let's try the smoothest first. Okay. Now you can see the paint. This paint still has a lot of a lot of imperfections and orange peel and stuff. So let me get a paper towel out. Get some of the grit off it, the dirt and dust, whatever. You'll know right away if it works. What does this have? The soft side now? Yeah. All right. The pink side is soft. Okay. Let's. And this is the green, which are, what is this? This is the green is fifteen. Yeah. Now, when they were at the show, did they use seconds or did they use water? No, they were using water. Plain water, no soap in it. I guess because it's a D tube, we should really use the soft side of the block. You can feel it cutting, believe me. I can hear it cutting. I don't, I don't have to tell you that this is cutting. You can feel it and hear. Steve, it's green paper on a green airplane, so we're not going to know. <laughs> no, you can feel it. You can feel. What I want to see is how it unclogs. And this is the smoothest of all of them, so. Okay, now you see, let me show this on the macro lens. This is what you normally run into. I need to get the macro lens. This is what you normally run into when you're sanding no, a normal paint finish, okay? And that definitely has cut it right back down to, to flat, to dead flat. Let me get that on a macro lens. Now here's the surface we just sanded with that. You can see, you even see scratch marks in it. Here's the un, the undone part. You can see the light. You can actually look at the light reflecting and how they disappear into the sanded part. They'll appear, disappear. Now I want to show this. This is one of the things you have with all wet sanding is you, you pick up what I'll call chewing gum on the sandpaper. Well, this is picking it up too, but what I want to see is are we going to be able to clean this off? and use the sandpaper again. Let's, uh, you know, let's try cleaning it. Okay, now what Jimmy's trying to do is with the six, the sickens 600 is clean that off. Now, one of the things you can try, rather than using the sickens with this particular paper, let's mix some soapy water up. 
Maybe this paper responds to soapy water better. It was ridges when I started, and right now I can tell you the ridges are gone. Now I guess if we put this under running water, which is what they say to yeah, do. Yeah, let's go. Hey, right, take it in the right bathroom out. and just put some soap and water on it. Even right here. Let's see how it looks. Okay, let me get down on a macro lens. You can see we've got an off. Well, an awful lot of it. All of it's off, and that's with the seconds. Again, here's one of the points: is you have to do a little bit of experimenting with any new product like this. There's advantages, but you got to find what the maximum. Now, a good way to do this would be to take some soapy water in a little, what I say soapy water, I mean a cereal bowl with uh, two drops of, uh, three drops of soap in it. Not soap like you take a shower or you wash your car. Take that and cut the sandpaper in half and see which side lasts longer, whether you use 600 to sickens or if you use soapy water. Now, it may be that soapy water is, uh, is the, the material of choice here. Let me go mix up some soapy water. That's a good way to try it. Yeah, this seemed to come all right off. Yeah, take the part of the sandpaper that we're not using. Let's try it with soapy water. Okay. To use a sheet cut in half. It's okay. Oh, you cut a sheet in half? Yeah. Okay, give this me the part we, we didn't before. use the sickens on. I think on. this is the new part. Just all right, this is soapy it. water. Let's see how so. Now, the reason, let me explain this. The reason you don't normally use soapy water on an airplane is water gets into the wood, into the glue joints, blah, blah, blah. This is an old airplane. It's pretty well sealed. But for our testing purposes, that's a clean one. This has never been used now. Okay, I got some water with two drops of. You can't even tell it's soap. It's in this a little. Let me do just up past where we were. The the stuff definitely cuts. I mean, you can feel it cutting. You can see it cutting. You know, it dulls it right out instantly. You know what I wish we had? I wish we had a plane in silver here. Okay, now this isn't picking up much at all. It's picking up a lot less with the water than with the sickens. But it's still cutting it down. Oh, yeah. 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 The guy that was demonstrating it had plates of flat metal that were painted with black lacquer, and he'd sit there and put his key scratch in it, and then let you take the paper and go up and grade. Yeah, yeah. And sand out the key scratch, and you'd be amazed how much you could cut. Let me just see the difference now. We got the water side. In the second side. Well, actually, the water is cutting less, so you can see it's 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 smoother there than it is here. Now I want to try one other thing. Let's try the whole thing without the block, because the block you really don't cut, but on the edge. Let me see where it ends. It ends right up by the stripe. You know, doing an open bay wing when you're doing tissue, you can't use a block. Right. So if it doesn't cut with a, can't have. It's a funny pressure. feeling stuff. It really feels. I mean, you got to put a lot of effort into making this. I can feel now. See, it's not picking up anything. See, you could sand all day with this now. All right. So the trick is with. It looks like the trick with this is, is use soapy water, don't you? Oh, that's cutting nice now. I can. I, Jimmy, I can feel this now. This would be real good. Now the trick is, once you get to that point. Okay. Now let me get the macro lens and show. See. There's the sickens, there's with the block, and there's by hand. You can see the by hand is by far the best. You know why? Because the block, you're only cutting on two edges. Right. The edges are already, but by hand, you're getting the whole palm area. So, my first suggestion, well, because this wing has a contour in it. So, that's almost perfect. That, I'll bet you I can buff up and, and let me put that on a macro lens. Now, this is on a macro lens. You can see this is the, the lacquer here. We're going out. This is where we sanded by hand. See, it's almost dead flat. And then out here where we sanded with the uh, sickens, it's a little shinier. And then, of course, we're back to where it's shiny paint again. Now, so my the, the first part of this thing, and of course, you have to run a test. You have to actually do a whole plane before you really know. Let's see if I can look down the wing and see that. To me, it looks like, well, now we'll try to buff this back out. Now what you have to decide is, what compound are you going to use to buff this back out? Now, usually Gorham's is the material of choice, so you can make up a thing if you use the green sandpaper with water and Gorham's, you're going to get this finish right here. That's usually what it, what would be helpful from this from this point of view is figure out, okay, eliminate the seconds, boom, right away go, you know, decide what you're going to do as far as which grade. Now, we what we could try right now is let's go one grade rougher. This is what the green is L1500. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All the paper is color coded also, so it's, it's color coded. Nice. You can just grab it, use it, and know what you've got without okay. having to worry about reading the back of the paper. Well, let's go to the next roughest grade and let's do a little spot with that. This is what you have to do. You have to run a little test. If if you think this stuff is going to jump out of the can or you're going to, you know, have some other way of making it magic, the only way you learn, you got to test it. Now, this is why Jimmy brought the stuff here, and we can spend a couple hours testing this out until we find something that Obviously, it works for us, and then hope that it works for you too. Okay, this is what grade now? This is six hundred. Uh, eight hundred. Excuse this me. This is eight hundred. Now, see what's funny about this? If you feel this, and you feel this, they they don't feel any different. It's a funny feel and stuff. But let's see. We know the, the hand is going to work better than a block. So let's go out by the tip here. Let's find a spot where we have. There's no sanding here at all. That sounds different. Oh yeah, this is this is this is like 600 is in in regular sand. This is 800. Mm-hmm. See, you have to get a cross reference. This might be like. Let's get over here. That's done. That's done. That's finished Ooh, sanded. Neat. That eight. Now what is that? 800. That's eight. Okay. What's the one grit? That's perfect. That's ready to buff. So the first thing we learned is if you're gonna lacquer that's cured. Forget the green, go right to the blue, but now let's try the other one. Tam you off a little piece of that. What's the other one? 600? 600. Cut me a piece of that. 800 is better than 1500 right now, at least on this particular finish. It's definitely better. Jim's cutting the sheets in half. Again, this is all stuff you have to do little tests. You have to be willing to spend some time. We're talking about 600 now. Let me go out. We pretty much have this whole leading edge sanded. Up here we can do some. And that's about sounds about the same as the eight. How does it feel? The same. Doesn't feel any different. It feels like a wall in them. The eight was cutting the best. With the water anyway. Hmm. It has a nice feel to it, I'll tell you. It's it feels like it's real. We went out onto the trim here, so that's okay. Oh man, that's perfect. It did cut that's, different though, didn't it? That's, <laughs> oh yeah. This is the best of the three. I could, this is the 800. Right here, this is going to buff up almost instantly. Let me get the macro lens on that. You know what it looks like just before it buffs up? I don't know if we're going to get this on the macro lens. I wanted to get with some of this light reflection. Now from this angle it's not going to be any good. You can you can see what right here is where if you could feel this, this is absolutely ready to buff. This is really good. And this is what you're really looking for when you go to buff, is that it's satiny smooth, smooth to the touch, perfectly smooth. No orange peel. You can actually you can hear the difference. If we run out here, you don't hear anything. You can hear the difference. All right, now the next step, of course, that's the only three you have here? Yes, that's it. Right okay, now. 600. From this, I would deduce one thing. You'd probably want to go rougher than 600. If they have one, 400, say. In that's other the, words... That's the roughest this stuff goes is 400. 400, but you don't have any 400. No. Okay, the, fr from what we've seen so far, 400 would be... For this kind of a refin... Now, now, this is not saying it on real dope, you know, when you do a brand new dope finish... That would be the material of choice, but for doing an old finish like this, that you can tell how it cuts, it seems like, my guess is, the 400 would be the material. If you're going to order some to try it, but of course it's good to have all these. For instance, this may polish aluminum, one may polish uh, paint that's brand new, sanding silver. This, this is really good to have some of everything here. One might work better on a canopy. Exactly. Yeah. For doing a canopy, it would be perfect. Now the acid test is, do some experiments on your own, but you want to see, this is what you're really doing a whole job for. This is Gorham's and a paper towel, a bounty. If you use an old sock, it's not a good idea because you may, you get a false reading from the dried up Gorham's that's on the sock. What you want to see is, we're going to go right back over this whole panel. We have four different tests, five different tests on here. And if we can buff this up in a matter of five minutes, you know, you basically, this would be, one of the things, you know what this would be good for? Like Joe Adamusco has that plane that's 
like two years old and needs a repair and a buff, when you rebuff the paint. Oh, Jimmy, perfect. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this, it doesn't get a lot better than this. That's absolutely perfect. And you can see, now you can see how much work I put into it. You can even see where I stopped. Run your hand over it, you can feel it. You know, you don't even, you know, if you have no calluses, you can right feel there. it right away. Yeah. Oh, you can feel it right away. So the, it's like a wall. <laughs> yeah, the final conclusion here is do a test. So I would start with 400, go to 600. I would try that, and I would say have the Gorham's handy because it's only going to be a matter of 10 minutes, and you can go right to the Gorham's. I mean, there's no big, no big tremendous thing going on here. We'll get this on a macro lens just so you can see it. And never use a rag that's got dried up Gorham's on it because you'll get scratches. And this is a plane that's, uh, let's see, we're looking at made in 88, refinished in 89, 94, four or five year old finish here. Now you basically can always tell the shine just by looking down the wing too. You can see some of the shine that's on there. And there's no wax on there, that's right. No, there's no wax, believe me. That's it. Anyway, this is the product. Jimmy kind of uh, brought this to our attention. La Pica from Topeka. Jim Lee sandpaper. Let's photograph the box. My suggestion, if you order some up, they don't even give you an address. Oh, I see. It says it goes to 400 here. Yellow. I would give that a try. Anyway, just one more product you may or may not want to give a try to, and if you do and it works, please let me know. If it doesn't work, let me know. Uh, I'm hoping guys like Steve DeGiulia will give this a try. He, uh, he's the king of buffing in Pennsylvania, so let's hope he gives it a try. Anyway, it works well on older finishes. I don't have anything new here that we could, could really try it on, but uh, it's worth a try. My evaluation here after an hour of testing is give it a try. And let me know if you, uh, you know, have any tricks that we haven't figured out yet. And try it with water and sickens both. Now today, we have a special treat in store. <laughs> I've said this before. I was out at the field. Bob Lampion was out there yesterday on a work day. And I was mentioning to him how I'm putting together footage for a crash repair set of videos. And I went to the back circle, and Bob conveniently gave me a little present. So what I decided to do is I'm going to try to fix this on camera today. And I'll return it to Bob at the Mass Cup. But what Bob did on this crash, and he's done this, it seems like he has a habit of landing on bubble canopies here. He squashed in the canopy. We're not going to be concerned with this. He chewed up the nose, and we're not going to be concerned with this, because this airplane is all monocoat. Now there's a couple of differences when you're fixing a monocoated plane, it's a lot easier to peel the finish away and then put new monocoat on than it is to, re to go back with paint and primer and whatever. So what we're basically talking about is a structural repair. Now by looking in here I see uh, you know, no oil has gotten into the back, that's nice. And I'm looking around in here and I'm looking for the first thing on this crash, the stab is broken. What I'm going to try to do is join the tail together and hopefully uh, maybe get a little splice or some glass cloth. I don't think glass cloth is going to do it here. It looks like it's pretty well whacked. His ray rudder linkage is all bent up. The main, main thing when you're looking at a repair like this is get all the pieces. While you're at the field, get all the pieces so when you get back into the shop like this, we were actually going to fix this at the field and then we decided based on the fact it was a work day and we were all dirty and tired, uh, we'd leave it for a, a shop fix. So uh, I imagine we'll be spending three, four hours here, but in the meantime, we will not be worried about the cosmetic part of this, the monocoat part. Just basically get it back to flying so Bobby can fly it again. He can put new monocoat. I think Walter monocoated this for him anyway, so Walter can get uh, some replacement monocoat that'll match. Anyway, first thing is make sure you have all the parts. Second of all, start looking at it, and to me, Trying to analyze this, the first step is going to be to fix this tail. Now I see it really looks like it's, it's broken at a very awkward spot. And I'm going to start looking at how I can get that back together before we even start to put the... And the body is just going to be a jigsaw puzzle of pieces.
Now you can see in here where this cracked right in the middle. It's cracked. So we get that on a macro lens there. You can kind of see what, what happened. Now if we can, we can try to just set this back together and maybe cut a piece of plywood to act as a spar. I don't know. Or if you really could, we could soak it with uh, CA and hope that it would hold and then just put some glass cloth. Again, I'm going to have to look at this for a little while. That's, that's going to be probably one of the major parts of this repair is figuring out how I can get that tail back together in one piece. Now one of the things, it's the number one thing right now that's a problem is when this tail is bent, it bent the horn. And even though this is a, uh, a 332nd horn, first thing is I have to figure a way of bending it back without breaking the tail in half. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it without taking the elevators off and bending the horn separately. What looks like is going to happen is I'm going to have to pull the elevators off and they'll probably come right off because this is a monocoat deal. No, they're not going to come right off. And have to put, yeah, yeah, they're not going to come off. This is a problem with monocoat deals is you don't, you don't really get a lot of glue in the hinges sometimes. This one is coming right off. But see what the problem is, is it's just bent. Now maybe I could get in there with a If I could just get this part of the elevator off, I could grab it with pliers. That would be a little bit better. Oh, boy. Okay. Bobby, glue the hinges next time. Okay, we got the elevator off. Now I can... I can get a, let's see if I can get, you can see how the horn is bent. And boy, it looks like it's bent right on the, uh, this is not one of my horns, by the way. Uh, bent right on the pivot point. That's going to be a problem. Unless I can get it this way. Let's see if I can get this way. Oh. oh, boy. I don't recommend anybody glue horns in this way. This is a nonsense way to glue them in and you can see how easy they came off. Okay, now I can get, look at the horn here. Now I can look at the horn and see the bend in the horn. First thing is I'll get some vice grip pliers out and straighten that horn out. Now, if you happen to have two sets of vice grips, it's a big help. I only have one set here. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That's a sound I hate. Now, not only do we have to get the horn bent side to side, but front to back. And what we'll do is we'll put this all back together without putting the elevators on so that we can get a, like I said, get a, uh, a fair chance at lining this up ahead of time. I don't even know if we're going to be able to use this horn, but let's see. This is one of the reasons I would say you should always use 8 inch horns. Okay. All right, we got most of the bend out of there. Okay, now that's kind of free. And we'll try to get this joint glued in next. Now this is kind of a, we're just going to hold this into position, try to tack glue it, eyeball it up. Run some CA there. Get it tacked in position before we actually go for the heavy duty glue joint. Eyeball it up and wait for it to kick off. Okay, and the main thing is we have it tacked glued into position now. Now we have to make sure it's strong. I'm going to run some extra glue down there, let it dry up, get a little sandpaper in there, try to make a little gap because 
this is a very thin tail. I don't know what he made this out of, 3 16 or whatever. It's a little, it looks a little flimsy to me by my standards. And I want to get in there, get some of the roughness out of there. And of course, if you have a choice, if you're not at the Nationals or something, it's always better to do these kind of repairs under shop conditions. I'll get another layer of glue in there and then get some glass cloth and some epoxy. This has the look of a job that could use some epoxy. Let's harden up the wood with CA first. Harden it up on the top, just let it drip and drool all over the place. Hey, that joint looks like it's going to be okay now. I'm going to sand this nice and smooth, get some epoxy and glass cloth in there, let it dry for a half an hour or so, and then put it to the test because I want to make sure the stab, first thing I want to do, I want to make sure the stab has good integrity before I go on to the next step of uh, repairing the body. Kind of integrity we have there already. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not bad, but the sanding dust will kind of fill in the cracks. We can even make it stronger, stiffen up the wood here. Bobby, if you ever crash this plane again, I hope the tail doesn't fold on you again. I like to drip some in the top. I'll try to get some epoxy down in the top there too. Usually if a tail folds, it folds up. It doesn't fold down. It falls up because the bottom of the horn takes a notch out of the bottom and it's weaker in this dimension so it'll always start to crack in the up mode. You very seldom see a tail fold in the down mode because of the way the horn puts a notch. Oh, that's getting nice and strong. The way the tail puts a, the horn puts a notch, a stress riser in the, uh, the back of the stab. So with that in mind, we're going to put a little extra, well, we're just going to let this dry for a few minutes. And get some glass cloth in here, some epoxy. Now we have three or four coats of hot stuff sanded so it's nice and smooth and it also it hardened up the wood. We just dripped it down, down into the tunnel there. Next thing is I'll get the epoxy in here, lay out the cloth and I'll just shove some epoxy and cloth down in here, let it dry and make sure the integrity of that stab is good before we go ahead and, and zip up the body. Now just mix up some five minute for this part of the job. This way I can get the glass cloth dried and I can get on with the next step of this job. If you were going to do this over the span of two or three days, what you might want to do is use slower drying epoxy. I'm sure this will hold. Remember that, Bobby, that's on the warranty. When you pay the bill, look for the warranty card on the dashboard. Now, getting the epoxy on one side of this is easy. And what I'm using is a long, thin stick to sneak it into this tunnel and get some up on the other side. I'd really like to get it on both sides if I could. Just would like to get some glue up in there if I possibly could. A long stick like this makes a good uh, way of applying it. Good applicator. And I tried to get it into where the fuse joint and the tail come together. Just in case there's a crack in there, let some of this kind of soak in. Now Mike Rogers at one time had a, uh, a foam tail on one of his planes that started to let go at Midgley's house. And we caught it, the tail, you could feel that it was flexing when he wiped the plane off. And we caught it before the tail folded. And I hope have, you know, since then saved the airplane anyway. And of course we're trying to do the same thing here. Okay.
And what I decided to do after looking at this for a couple of couple of different ways of doing it, I'm making a little piece of plywood as a splice because I can't really get glass cloth up over the top without cutting a rudder off. I don't want to put any more cuts in this. So I'm taking and made a, a little splice out of sixteenth plywood. And I'm going to put a good amount of epoxy on here. And I think this will add a little more strength if I do it that way. Now with that piece in place, I'm going to make another little batch of epoxy and put it right on top. Just as a double, double uh, strength. Because don't forget, the tail always wants to fold on the way up. It wants to bend up, not down. So I'll put this epoxy and then, then we'll get, well, we'll get back in there. And if it's nice and straight, we'll see if we can start working on the body. Yeah, this should be enough to stiffen this up for good. Again, I'm getting, trying to get a lot up into the fuse, the, the fuselage side here. I think this will work a little better than a glass cloth. It'll stiffen it up a little bit better. Trying to get some up on a fuse side to stiffen it up at the same time. Right up around the front. Stiffen that puppy right up. Okay, we're pretty much ready to start putting this uh, body back together. That, that tail is probably stronger now than it was when he built the plane. Now we're going to try our best to get some alignment here. And this is, this is basically just a jigsaw puzzle. What we want to do is try to tack glue this together and then check all the alignment before we go and firm it up. Now what's nice about doing it upside down is I can get some glue inside the body. And I can see if it needs to be stiffened up in any way. But of course what I want to do is just tack it. I don't want to make a permanent joint here. It's kind of a funky joint the way he broke this too. I'm just going to just tack this if I can, you see. This should hold it in position just, just, boy that's smoking right up. Just so uh, I can check the alignment on this. Now I have one side just holding it in position. I'm going to try to line this side up now and just tack this in. Just get that in position and tack it. And it's like just like making a big jigsaw puzzle now. As long as the joints are all tacked in, and you can go around later and drip the, the thin hot stuff in, and once you can kind of uh, get all the pieces in position. This is why it's important to have all the parts. Now I'm just going to tack this side here. This joint doesn't line up perfectly. There's a little piece missing. I just want it good enough that I can line up the other pieces. Let's get rid of some of the monocoat. Actually, the monocoat does make it a little bit easier to do. Actually, one of the choices you always have is you can strip off all the monocoat and uh, <laughs> just put all new monocoat on it. Okay, now I can get a little, just a few drops in here. Hold this together while I put the rest of the pieces in. Now, if you had to, you could even make a little splice inside. Once you get these... Now, I want to check for the integrity. Is it straight? It's not straight. We gotta... Before we glue any more... Ah, broke it. Before we get any more pieces, I want to get it half straight anyway. Set it back in position. Pack it again. Now what I'll do this time is I'll kick it while I get the integrity.
I'd like to see the tail end straight if possible. <clears throat> okay. Looks like we got a little bit of a bow in the tail, but not, not that much. Certainly we didn't erase. Certainly no worse than when he made the plane. Now, what if you wind up that the tail isn't in straight, right now you could break one of the formers loose, bend it, and just reset the former. That's a really good trick. We didn't have to do it on this one. I'm just re-gluing the formers while I have it apart like this. Now at this point we want to really make sure that we have the tail. See the tail still isn't perfectly straight but we're really getting close now. All we're going to do is just start breaking the formers away little by little and try to get a little bit of bend in this. A little bit. And what I'm going to do is just take some soft eighth inch, some punked out eighth inch and make a little splice because this there's really not a lot of material holding this together right now and it looks like I have the alignment close. And what this is going to do, I hope, is just hold our alignment while we go on to the next step. This is just like a little fixture. We could even leave it in there. The plane is super light anyway, it's not a problem. And this will be on the inside of the fuse. You can see this. That'll hold the alignment. This one we only need half the size. And then we should be able to start fixturing in the rest of the body parts. It would be nice if I had thin fingers. Always nice to have little fingers. Ooh, as it kicks off, it gets hot. Whoa. Okay, I'll just put a little extra in there. That should stiffen that up fairly well. It's probably amazing how many people throw a perfectly good plane away or give it away or whatever, and really what it probably would take is one, three, or four hours. This looks like it's going to go more than four hours fixing. So Bobby's going to owe me two pizza pies instead of one. We're going to a two pizza repair here. Now you just can see that's a splice on the inside, a splice here, and we're, it's nice and solid now. Now we can start putting that body back together. An internal splice like that, use it as a fixture, that's a good trick. Now of course we have this one big piece, we're going to try to fit it in here all at once. This I suspect will be more of a job than it looked than it first appears. This is why it's important to have all the parts. So if you're missing even one part, what a pain in the ass. Okay. Since we have the tail lined up pretty well, we're not going to worry about getting nice even joints. What we're going to worry about is maintaining the alignment. Tack this side again. Just tack it. Tack. No permanent joints yet. So we don't want to lose that tail alignment. Put some of this monocoat away. Now we're not going to be able to get that joint a whole lot closer. We're going to have to fill it. But what the pro because what happened is we've got this all broken up inside. We want to keep the tail alignment. It's very important. If you get this joint right, the tail's going to come out of alignment. Now you can see we have the same problem on this side. We have to squeeze this together little by little by little, and we are missing a little piece up here, so 
pretty much try to get these squeezed together and fill it, fill that little gap with thick CA. And one of the things you may have to do from time to time is get a knife in here and even these sides up. In this case, we don't have them in good alignment, but I'm really paying attention to keeping that tail in alignment more than anything else. We'll let the knife act as a little wedge. Probably glue the knife right in position. Hey, okay. Now we'll give that a little test to make sure it's good and strong. That looks like it's going to be just fine. Try to CA what's left of the top block here. There isn't a lot left. I'm going to have to make a little plug for this. Drip some CA in there. Okay. Looks like we're closing in on having this working. Let's check the controls. We don't have any epoxy or anything on the controls. And of course, make sure when neutral is here, looks like he has a little flap tweak in here already. Neutral is neutral. And these horns, which bullshit horns that are in here. Use eighth inch horns on everything, Bobby. Stop fooling around. See now, if you had eighth inch horns in here, you would not have lost the integrity. Everything would stay in alignment. But in here, we got to start figuring out where the alignment is now. Get everything lined back up. A little bit of a pain in the ass. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is try to get the elevators back. Well, before I do that, I'll trim some of this away. Some of this cosmetic stuff I just want to trim away. Now, this kind of stuff here I just want to trim off just to make it a little more aerodynamic. And I'm going to let Bobby do all the sanding and cosmetic stuff here. We'll just try to clean it up for him. So possibly if he wants to com compete at the Mass Cup, Probably isn't isn't nostalgia legal now. Trimming all this stuff off, and then I'll put a little CA on the wood so that the oil doesn't soak in there. I don't know if he wants to go back to having a tremendous finish on here or whatever, or he can bring it over to Walter and have him remonocoat it. Okay, and just. Harden up the wood here, the idea being oil will not soak in, and we'll do that to all the cosmetic things. Now, the easiest way to fix something like this is just make a plug, take a V-notch out. Take a nice pie cut out first of all. Get a piece of really soft punk wood, just shove it down in there. This will add some strength to the top block. Actually, the fuse feels pretty strong right now. Feels pretty decent. Now, because you're using punked out soft wood for the patch, you don't have to make yourself crazy getting this all nice and even. And you probably could just monocoat right over the old monocoat, really, to tell you the truth. Now we'll cut up a little piece of scrap wood with a V in it and just shove it right down in there and then trim it. And that'll, that'll add some structure here. Let me just find an old piece of scrap here. Hey, pretty good on a first shot. Not bad. The only purpose this is going to serve is to add some integrity, some strength to the body. You don't want to have a box that isn't closed. You want all the surfaces joined. In other words, if you have a box with three sides, it has no strength. You have to complete the box. If we leave this open in the top, it's just going to leave a lot of strength missing. Now this is, this is called a plug. When you take a, a notch out, we're going to shove a piece down in there and then just carve and sand it away. That's called a plug. 
and that's an excellent way to repair things. Whoop. Now because it's soft balsa, it should conform more than just a little bit into that pot. Now what we want to do is trim it off, get it almost even, get most of it off, get the big parts off with a zona, trim the rest with a good old Exacto-Matic. Again, we're not going to really spend a lot of time making this fancy. If the plane flies well, and one of the philosophies here is if the plane flies real good again and we haven't gotten anything out of alignment, uh, you might want to take it over to winter, pull off all the monocoat, sand all these joints down and fill them with nitrostain. Maybe even put a paint job on it instead of a monocoat job. I don't think this whole thing is going to add even an ounce. But again, this does add a lot of strength. And of course, seal it with NCA and keep the oil out of it. And Bobby might get five more years out of this plane. This might be the next national champion old time plane. Who knows? It's a nostalgia plane. Who knows, you never can tell. You can see there's some strength there. That's what we need. Now I want to get these elevators just put in position, not glued on. I'll get some epoxy in the hinges. I just want to see if they line up yet. Because I'm sure that horn has been bent and it'll be easier to rebend the horn if we just put these on by hand. Actually, the most one of the most time consuming parts of this job, if Bobby had put an eighth inch horn in here, we wouldn't have this, for, this is just a nightmare to try to get this horn even. The thing is bent like a pretzel inside the body and is really, to really get it so the elevators line up with the flaps the way they should, it's a little bit of a, little bit it's a real pain in the ass. That's better than it was. You really need a lot of fooling around here to get it just right. Oh man. to get all these aligned. It's really a big job. It's really a pain in the neck. Well, the thing here is you have to keep putting the elevators on, taking them off until you get the alignment the way you want it. And I'm doing this by eyeball. It's really not exactly perfect, but that's about as close as we're going to get under these conditions. Now what will make it easier, I'm just going to snap this rave rudder linkage off for right now. Just so we can get the elevators. I want to get the elevators in alignment here as much as I can. And then I want to get the hinges epoxied in and then I'll play with that rave rudder thing. Now this is just a test fit. Just to see if they're even close. Because these thin, these thin rubbery horns, boy, you never get the alignment twice. In fact, it doesn't even look like the flaps. The flaps have a tweak in them. I don't know, Bobby. Bobby, you're going to have to retweak this, that's for sure. Uh, but it's close. I don't know what I'm worrying about. It looks pretty close. Okay, we're going to pull this off, epoxy these on. We're ready to put these on for good now. Now, whether you're building or fixing, 
epoxy the hinges in. Don't put it in with whatever this looks like it's in with CA. These hinges have nothing holding them in. It's a bullshit job, Bobby. I don't know who did this, but epoxy them. Epoxy. Look at some of the construction videos. Three of the hinges that were in here don't even have any glue on them. I think they were just going along for the ride here. Three out of six. Okay, but we all try to learn from each other. And boy, I've had, and Big Jim will tell you, I've had planes that <laughs> when they crashed, you could just grab the elevators and pull them right off. That's one of the tests you can do. If you have a crashed plane, try to pull the elevators off barehanded. And if you can, you know you're not getting enough glue on the hinges. That's a good test you can do to check your own stuff. Now I'm even, see where this wood is peeled up? I'll get some epoxy down in there, kind of fuel proof it. Get some down into the gaps here. Check that everything's moving nice. Check that everything's in alignment again. Okay. And now I just basically have to do the same thing to the rudder. Again, the hinges have just fallen right out. This one, you could just pull it. This is not the way to install hinges. Okay, so we're going to put epoxy on these hinges too. Maybe save Bobby one of these coming out in flight. Same thing, we'll line this back up. Put some trash out here. And then we'll just check out the rave rudder linkage. Make sure it's nice and free. Squeeze the hinges, let the epoxy kick off. I have no idea where he had this set up. But we'll put it there for now. Now while that epoxy is drying, there's a little cosmetic spot up here I want to trim out. This, believe it or not, we are missing a piece. Bobby said he had all the pieces. He's missing one. We'll try to trim back some of the rough edges on a Monaco just so it doesn't look so ratty. Bobby can do the cosmetic stuff himself. Well, again, we're not looking for a big cosmetic job here. We would like to see him fly a plane again though. Hey! It looks like it lives. Looks like it will have life. Let's see, the controls seem to work. The Ray rudder works. Uh, there's just a couple rough edges here on a fuse I want to dress off. The big, any little rough edges here. What I'll do for now, I'll just put some tape over that hole so oil doesn't get in there. Now really all that's left here is to vacuum up the floor, clean off the table, and do a little touch up on this as best we can. It'll be kind of ready to go. It lives. It'll live to fly again. Now we're not looking to make this concourse, but we would like to just touch it up enough that it doesn't look terrible. And, and another thing, so fuel doesn't get into the wood and you lose this structure. So what I'm gonna do is just clean off the spots where it's monocoated here. I've already put thin CA on it. Try to raise it off all the sharp edges. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of touch-up paint that's almost this color. Now believe it or not, candy apple from my uh, the Toxic Avenger is almost discovered. In fact, Bobby probably stole my Toxic Avenger paint job here. Anyway, not a big deal. We want to touch it up. 
just make it look halfway decent. And it's actually a very satisfying thing to know you can take a plane that otherwise would never be flown again or have a very, uh, you know, very useless life hanging on a wall waiting for you to fix it. And you can actually get some flying. I I'm very happy that we can get some flying out of this. Now we will get to see this fly again. Like Mike Pratt's plane and like other planes that have been repaired. And just brush it on and that's it. Now we're going to do the same thing to the wingtip here. Just going to touch this up and then put clear tape on top of it so it doesn't get any worse. There's a patch in the outboard wing I'm going to take and just put clear tape over it. I'll cut a piece of the, the uh, good hinge line tape for that. And a little spot in the body I can touch up too. Again, this is not Concord stuff. Mm -hmm. just want to get a, a little fuel proofness to this. And believe it or not, from, you know, from 10 feet away, if the judges never come up and appearance point it, and it'll, it'll actually uh, not look so bad, even when it's flying. You won't even notice this, I'm sure. We got that little spot on a rudder. It just makes it a little bit neater if you can... Now this will keep it until... And if Bob decides to refinish it, of course, you just sand this paint right off. Or remonocoat it, or bring it over to Walter, have him remonocoat it, whatever. Make sure we don't have any epoxy in the hinges. I don't have any yellow paint, so I'm going to have to leave that. But what I can do, see, I can fake it. I can get it sort of striped, kind of, from 10 feet away. You don't see the stripe. Let's see if we can match the stripe. Look at that. What an artist. Holy crow. Walt Prey, eat your heart out. And we're just going to put clear tape over that. I see the bottom where the monocoat is missing. I can just do, I can do the same thing over here. Plus, the clear tape will keep fuel from getting in there if there ever was. If Bobby does fly without wiping it off, which probably he will. Bob, wipe it off between flights. That's all there is to it. Okay, we're closing in on having this guy repaired. And I hope some of the information on this repair video is going to be very useful to you in the future. And the most useful thing it'll be is don't crash the plane. Don't be a Wendy or a Bobby or a Chazinski or whatever. And if you do, know that you can get some information to uh, get that puppy back in the air. Now this, the color will be here and the clear tape can just go right on top of it. Now one of the, the materials I prefer for this kind of job is ordinary hinge line sealing tape. What happens if you use the real sticky tape like FastCal or one of those kind of tapes, when you go to pull it up, either the finish or the monocoat comes right up. With this tape, well, you hope anyway, you hope it's not going to come up. You can get it up without ruining the finish or without peeling up the monocoat underneath it. Hinge line tape is supposed to be sticky, but not so sticky that you pull up the paint. And that's the whole trick, is to find the right stickiness. Much like masking tape for paint jobs. And this will just keep the monocoat from blowing off. And this will actually make for not a, not a terrible repair. Keep the fuel out. Razor off the edges a little bit so it's half neat. And like I said, from three, four feet away, or, or how, however far away, that's a suitable repair. If we had new monocoat, we could just replace the monocoat, of course, but that's a good repair. Now here's a, another hole in a wing. Of course, before you put any tape down, give it some M600, prep saw, in a pinch Windex, I guess it'd be okay. With that hole there, it just would get worse, or if worse could happen, it would just rip out in flight. Again, another... Always good to have a roll of hinge line tape in your toolbox, just for such on-the-spot kind of repairs. Many days I've gotten through a day of 
some idiot had put his whole a finger through my plane or something and I could get through the day and not lose the day of flying. on the fuse here just to cover that hole up and kind of let this come up to the other side and if you want to kind of hide the tape line what you do is you trim it off even with a paint trim line that kind of disguises where the edge is see in this case we'll trim it right here with the edge of the green The tape, believe it or not, also adds some strength. And depending on how this flies, I would encourage Bobby to refinish it, strip it, whatever, over the winter. Make a new plane. It's a lot easier than building a new plane, that's for sure. That kind of hides the edge of the tape that it ends right there. Press it down nice. That covers that hole up. Now if I had some of this yellow paint, I could bury that in yellow paint too. And what I did find is a roll of this crazy yellow tape, that's striping tape or whatever it is. And that'll go a long way toward, toward disguising that. Or at least making it a little bit neater. Hey, and the reason we do such a nice job for Bob is, hey, we break his chops on all these videos, but we really love the guy. Now, an another thing that can kind of disguise this a little bit is we can put a couple extra trim stripes right over the repair. In other words, one of the things you got to think about here, this is always a thought, is how do you disguise little flaws? Now, if you're painting, you can do letra sets. You can put gas caps and fuel caps and toilet seats and whatever on. But when you're doing this kind of a monocoat thing, you just lay strips of monocoat over there and hope that that kind of a little bit disguises it. And you can see that it looks a lot better than without it. Well, there it is. We put a couple of more stripes on the leading edge. I ran this little stripe down the body to try to disguise that. Controls are working nice and free. Looks like it's in good alignment, and it looks like it gained about two-thirds of an ounce. So I think this was a successful repair, and I hope, uh, <laughs> hope some of this information, obviously, you can use on your next, hopefully never to happen, but if it does, repair. Now the next thing, Bobby's plane is finished, one of the next things we want to put on here, I have some footage from the 92 Nats repair in Jim Borelli's plane, which was another Monaco job, and the wing had folded, and how we repaired that, and if you notice these things in the motel rooms at the Nats usually turn out to be joint, everybody pitches in, and it's kind of a, a light atmosphere, which is kind of a, a neat thing. Anyway, this is, this is an excellent repair. The this is in Nats first? Right Not for Wendy, of course. Wendy's uh, trying to repair Jim's airplane here. And Jimmy's uh, getting blue in the face because he's destroying the shit out of his beautiful Monaco job. <laughs> but he'll be able to fly tomorrow, and that's what counts. <laughs> when you hear motors start in the morning, this won't mean a thing. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> we were hoping it starts tonight, Wendy. <laughs> the morality of it all will go right away. Okay, this is about as far out as we need to go with this. This is an expert at work for us. Is this self-focusing wind? Yeah. Okay. Let's zoom back so we can get the master at work. It's amazing you put Gunner's airplane back together. How many pieces was that in? 300. Jesus. This one's easy because I have the owner on site. <laughs> I didn't have his permission to do what I did. But then again, I didn't care. I doubt if he cared either. Did he make it the... No, he just missed. Excuse me, James. What you do is get the clear packaging hinge line tape, and when this is done, just cover it with clear tape. 
so the oil doesn't get in there. Okay, got the zona saw. Who's got the zona saw? The zona saw is up on the table. I don't know if it's deep enough, Jimmy. You may have to find uh, a deeper one. But it'd be dark. No, this is uh, not real deep. But. Joe, you start mixing up 45 minute epoxy, about uh, two ounces of it. Okay. Have we got it? I haven't got it. Uh, All right, Bobby. <clears throat> Let's get some right amounts here. Yeah, well, we got a measuring cup. That should do the trick. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Just lay it on the table. Do you have a Dremel tool? Yeah. Okay, set it up with a sanding tool, Joe. Right? For the hammer and chisel, Wendy, or what? No, I don't want to cut Drew into the wing. That's the problem. I, I want to get this piece out. See, now I never would have thought to do this, Bobby. Without this, with this piece, if you just dope out here, three flights later, this thing's going in. You got to get a piece that goes side to side. Uh -huh. Actually, this is what you guys made me do to my wing. This is what Wendy said to do. And big him. Well, did your wing fall? No, it's strong. Looks straight. like it's coming up. Well, he's got it really glued down here, like. That. Oh, I see. He's got a solid block. Save all the pieces. There we go. Save all the, all the pieces. Get the Dremel tool plugged in. We're getting close to the patient's heart. Now, which you want to put a new belt crank in which here while we want? Want? <laughs> This one with the roughest drum you have. Let's see how Bobby's doing on the other end. This is the easy part. Get that guy doing this work. Just call me a chemical, uh, okay. chemical agilist. She was. Okay. It's easy. You taking all of this in? Yeah. I got battery blinking, Wendy. Doesn't matter. Just go right till it stops. Okay. Okay. Dremel tool. Wait. Gotta change the. Put a new one on if you can, Joe. You got a very fine screwdriver to get the uh, get this whole thing so I can put a new Oh, the um Might as well change the bell crank while we're at it. Is that the screw right there? Don't think I haven't done this at the Nax either. <laughs> the, as soon as appearance judging is over, that plane is <laughs> worth a nickel. Carve away. Like, right? Yeah, you should see some. I replaced the flap. We had to do a blind nut for the engine. Nose I did Gieske's nose one time. Gieske's nose was falling apart at a Reno. He couldn't look. Bruce Gifford and I, we had to shut the door and lock him yeah. outside. <laughs> How can you guys do this? <laughs> you all need to build this block. It didn't hurt me any longer to build it. Actually, any cutter will do here, Joe. What kind of cutter are you I have doing? this on here, but that's too... That's not... mm -hmm. This is okay. All right, then. We're just going to take hold some hold material hold away. Zach, you know the best thing you got? Put this thing in there. Yeah. Put that in there, yep. Trust me. This one will be okay too. Any one that I can get. Well, this, this is the one you want? I'll put this, this one. Put this one. Just like it is. Nothing fancy. I'm not going to feel like trusting Bobby tonight. You know what Damarell's got? It's beautiful. A Dremel tool that runs by batteries. Get right out at the field. Water. That's you can bet Christmas time comes out, it'll be on uh, top of my list. What is it with? Uh, Right with that hair dryer is. And now we don't need the hair. Joe, you got another one of these cups, Joe? Alright. I got, got, got a crack in the bottom. But the rules are time.
I knew you were going in a speed job in the hallway. <laughs> Look at Jimmy's sweater. The point gets open heart surgery. I got to cut the breast off. Take it from me, guys. I had done. <laughs> you start feeling pain in your chest, Bob? We got the tool right here. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, look at that tree blowing. I'm telling you, it's getting worse. Flexion. I am trying not to fly in the wind, but today I had no choice. But keep in mind, this isn't going to stop it from breaking. Spread it apart a little bit. That's it. Okay, here's the gluing procedure. Look at Wendy's brush technique. Isn't that something? Front row brush stroke. <laughs> front row brush stroke, you got it. Uh, front row your ass. This panoramic one. here. Just spread that just a little bit. You see the crack coming up? Yep. So let it go in there. Now let it go. Watch it. See it pull up? Yep. Okay, open it up. See what I'm doing? Just shove the glue down in there. Okay. Working in, baby. Yeah, let it up. Now let it back. See the glue is... Okay, but do it three, four times. Don't break the wing. Any worse than it is. That's good enough. Okay, now where's that Bobby Hunt stuff? That uh, The thickest cloth you have there. It'd be great if we had some carbon fiber. There's no carbon fiber in there? No, it's got Kevlar. No, Kevlar is not. The heavy cloth. That's it. Scissors? Scissors. Oh, I got a scissor. I don't know how good it is. How about this stuff he's got as strips there, Jim? There might be some. No. <clears throat> On the next volume of this tape, we're going to cover some other aspects of repairing, but these are just a couple of little ideas you might or might not want to keep in mind. When you have a foam wing, and I'm going to do like a side view, front view, whatever you want to call it, of a foam wing. And we just had to do this, believe it or not, to Mitch Dressler's plane. What will happen is from time to time you're going to need to fix this sheeting. Let's say that, see if we can do this. Let's say right here you have a break in the sheeting from here to here, and you need to make a patch so that this piece is actually missing. This piece up here is actually missing out of the wing. So what will happen is, now you want to make that patch. It's almost impossible to just laminate a piece of 16th wood in there. But if you do this, and I'm just going to make this just about as simple as you possibly can be. And if you take, and on a typical foam wing, this is a little difficult to envision. Let's say there was foam here, foam here, all over. Of course, it's depending on where the patch has to be. Okay, and if what you do is get in here and dig out, gouge out some of this foam from right underneath here. Okay, gouge that right out. Now, underneath here, with the grain going spanwise, make a little lip and glue that in, probably with the CA that doesn't melt foam. And it's always good to use at least, at least eighth inch wood so you have a nice firm little shelf. Well, now you can see what will happen is now you can just make a piece with a real tight fit that just drops on there. And what you do with this piece is, if this is a sixteenth here, you make this piece out of three thirty-second or eighth, so it's, it, it stands up higher than the wood around it. And now because it has a lot, of, a lot of strength, you're higher than the wood around it, now you want to come along with a nice big long sanding block and little by little dress it right off, dress it right off, dress it right off until ultimately it sands right in. And if you really wanted this to be strong as possible, go out about an inch in each direction, half ounce glass cloth and epoxy, let it dry, fill that in, and then maybe give it a couple coats of auto primer, bury that in auto primer, and you'd have a real, real good joint. That would be a great way. Keep that in mind. This is a great little trick for fixing foam wings. Another technique you're going to use from time to time, and we just did this on Lampione's body, is you're going to have a chunk missing here. Now what you always want to do with a chunk that's missing is you want to V it out. Let's say this is a top block. Well, in Bob's case, we just V'd this right out. Get rid of this material. 
Now make a plug, soft balsa, and if you can, have the grain go in the same direction, not entirely necessary, but cut that in oversize. Squeeze it right in so it just meshes right in where it should. Then you want to take a zona saw, an X-Acto knife or whatever, get it down almost to the skin height, get rid of all this material. And then last but not least, get the long sanding block if you were looking for a real nice finish. And you would hope the grain would all go in the same direction. Dress it right off all around, dress it around. So you ultimately wind up with a plug that's, and it's called a plug. Now one of the things I like to keep in mind when you do these kind of jobs is avoid spackle, red lead. These are things to avoid if you possibly can, as used as a last resort only. Always fill a crack or a hole in with the same kind of material as the material you're filling. So the advantage is they all expand and contract at the same time. And the only thing you're going to possibly see through the finish is when you're all finished is the glue line. Now the way you avoid, if this is again a concourse finish, is you go out further than the joint by a half inch to an inch. And I'm just simulating this with gla half ounce glass cloth and epoxy. The epoxy where one tube is bigger than the other. Let that dry overnight. It's going right over the joint. Now block sand it in. Now the next time you go over this, take auto primer and go out a half inch more. Second coat goes over a half inch more and over. So you're building up a layer of auto primer. And you can just dress it and block sand it right in. And then of course when you're all finished, the last thing, color paint the whole area. Add extra paint to where the glue joint is because this will probably stick up just a little bit in this way. You can buff and sand it right down. And you'll have a joint that for all purposes will be invisible. Now one of the things I believe everybody should do is from the very beginning is build each plane when you originally build it with the mounts far enough apart and the bolts far enough and if, if you use a Super Tiger 60 even if you have no intention of ever using a Super Tiger 60 is to make this bolt pattern in the crutch fit a Super Tiger 60 because that is the largest widest motor that you can practically use. Now when it comes to retrofitting any other motor 51's V-Maxes, 40s, Webras, any motor. By elongating the holes, you'll find out you can drop them right in between those mounts. What happens if you make the mounts too thin and you go to retrofit some of the bigger motors, you wind up, this will be the front view, you wind up having to chop so much of this motor mount away, and we had to do that on a few planes already, it becomes a very impractical thing. Thing. So one of the things we're going to cover, this is about the end of this tape, one of the things we're going to cover extensively on the next video is the finishing techniques for getting in rear exhaust motors where side exhaust should be, side exhaust where rear exhaust should be, and we've retrofitted these things back and forth, pipes, no pipes, mufflers, no mufflers, and it's always nice to be able to put any motor in a plane. Now we'll close this video out now. The next tape will have some really interesting stuff on it, including some of the retrofits that we've done over the years. But this is a tip worth its weight in gold. Always build a crutch wide enough for a Tiger 60. Almost every other engine on the planet will drop right in. And you can always, if all else fails, all your experiments, all your things go wrong, you can always put back old Super Tiger 60 when you're all done. And you'll never get hurt having a plane that if everything else fails, you know you can always get the Super Tiger 60 in, and you know you'll get your flying in at the field.